Good afternoon and welcome to the Prioritizing Wellness, a holistic approach to mental health webinar. My name is Danika Saunders. I am the event coordinator for SACAP and I'll be your host this afternoon. Joining us today, we have Leanne Stein. Leanne is a registered psychotherapist and senior lecturer. She has a unique set of skills and a multidimensional approach to psychology, criminology and sexology in practice. Leanne holds a Master of science, of science degree in Sexology, Professional Master's Cum Laude, and she's a registered sexologist with the Council for Sexual Health Professions, the CSHP, in South Africa. She also consults and lectures for, for SACA. Without any further ado, I will now hand over to Leanne. Thank you. Thanks, Danica, and thank you to SACA team for inviting me today and um, yeah, let me tell you a little bit about um, the wellness, a, a holistic approach to mental health is something that I do often, I started bringing up with my students, it's also in one of the SACAP programs, self-esteem and motivation and we often in the one session we talk about the balance wheel and I thought that was just the perfect way to start talk, talking about a holistic approach and giving sort of a visual um, a diagram at how we can look at our health, our, our general well-being, and seeing where it um, where we are. So we're going to just look at a our physical, emotional, mental, social, and spiritual well-being, and we're going to look at a few things like nutrition, exercises, self-care, very important. As well as we can look at emotions, managing them, reducing stress, which I think a lot of us could really uh, deal with right now, and um, promoting emotional resilience, and the importance of social connections, community engagement, and fostering mental relationships. And we can also look at mindfulness. Um, I mean, I think you've heard mindfulness is definitely on the topic in psychology, gratitude practices. And you're going to look at the impact of your environment and having a bit of balance within your work and your personal life. And then, of course, just looking again at your practical self-care techniques that you can go home and practice. All right. So if we go now to the balance wheel, there we go. So I think it is the best representation to give to have um, to look at something. And go. Where do I fit in? On this, where am I at different stages? So there you got career and business, you got your partner and love, family, you got your health, fitness and well-being, money, finances, personal growth, fun and your social life. And then you can start plotting. You can start seeing, okay, so where am I fitting in on this? And really, I like that idea when you have an overall kind of uh, image and then you can see you know what I am looking and looking really good in this one area and I'm lacking in another one and it makes that visual sort of pop out at you and so I think the next slide will just give you an idea what it looks like when you start plotting it so there you go um so you can see it's got the little um dots that goes from one all the way to ten at the top and then I think before you even start plotting you need to get an idea what is happening at ten so 10 is on the circle, the outer edge of the circle. So what is happening at 10? So let's go, what is your ideal? And I think it must also be realistic. So if you start plotting and seeing where you are, um, where you're going to, really get a goal in that area. Where do you see yourself with regards to a partner or regards to love? And then set yourself the goal. Then you can go back and you can plot yourself, where do I see myself? The same with career or business. So I'm going to use that one as an example. Um, well, this one is um, plotted at the moment on an eight. And um, so I so it would have been I went to study or I finished my trick. I said, let's start with my trick. You finish my trick, uh, you go and study, you study even further. Masters was there, you got a job that you want develop my own career, uh, started your own practice. Fantastic. So I've got quite far in career and business. Put it at an at a eight because you know what? There's still space. There's still space for doing more. You, and it's a place of continual development. 
So I don't want to, I don't want to be, I don't want to cap it up and say I'm at the end. Um, so I put it at sort of an eight. What you do is you go through every area and you have a good, get it sort of an idea of where am I at at this point. I can definitely see health, fitness definitely needs to move up a bit. I can, I'm lacking in that. Uh, fun and social life is just almost non-existent, as you can see. All right, so this really just allows you to visual your guide, your goals, where you're going, and then you can make the plan. You can actually make an active plan. So now, when I was brought this up in class yesterday, and we we're talking about, do you think an absolute balanced wheel is actually possible? And we we're kind of debating this and saying, is it realistic to say that my wheel will be 100%, everything on tens, and nothing? nothing out and we kind of came to the decision that no it's not possible number one being that because we're human and i don't think a total balanced wheel is ever going to be possible because we are human but there is definitely the wanting to strive to have that, that total balance and it's about putting little things in place and we read all these things of how to make things bigger or uh, sort of better and how do i incorporate these but it doesn't Sometimes it's, it, it's hard to actually incorporate something. So how do you do that? And so I'm going to kind of just share a little bit of what I've done, of all the things I've read and the experience I've had. How did I start incorporating? Because how do you, there's so many parts to put together. How do you actually start making those, those steps towards something, towards that bigger, um, fuller, balanced wheel? And then what, so what I was what I found was make small steps. I think that's the biggest thing is if you, we tend to want to go full force into it. For example, you want to lose weight, you can decide tomorrow I'm starting a diet. And what happens when you go full into I'm starting a diet tomorrow and I'm only going to eat this, this, and that? What do you want the next day? Everything that you're not allowed. I think it just puts that thing into. It, it, it purposely part of being human as soon as you say i can't have it you want it so that does not work so i realized sometimes to train you you need to slowly put things in place so today i might say do you know what i'm going to start cutting out from the sugar of it and uh, i'm not going to have the three teaspoons of sugar in my coffee but today i'm going to from tomorrow i'm going to have one and then about a week's time, you're gonna go down to, do you know what, maybe I can quit that or I won't I'll I won't have a slab of chocolate at night. I'm going to start having a little chocolate at night. And so it's about slowly breaking it down and not causing such a drastic change. So when a drastic happens, it, it just it tends to be unpleasant and it just it tends to not work. And so that's that's the kind of the thing for all of the things. So slowly creating the changes in in all the areas. Um, what am I going to do to increase time with family and have more quality time? You know what? So it doesn't mean you have to plan a whole week with them, and by then you might want to just murder one of them or So it's about then slowly just making plans and saying, you know what, this weekend uh, we're going to plan a family out, um, outing or we're going to make a time every night um, that we have a, a phone call or so it's that you slowly just putting in things in place and then it comes automatically more and more. All right. Um, if we can just go to the next slide, I want to show you what you can do. <coughs> so you know it's, it's to do a your own um, balance wheel, I found this amazing website that allows you to develop your own. So if you look there, so I just uh, took some of the other results and I put it into this. But it also creates you to, uh, allows you to create your own heading. You can also create your own different pie charts. So you can say in the one wheel that you want spirituality or if you decide you don't want to call it spirituality, you want to call it a uh, relationship with God, you can do that. You can change and also allows you to give a definition of each segment. <clears throat> so for example, what my understanding of fun and recreation might not be what it is for somebody else. So in my fun and recreation can maybe be going fishing, 
and I I want to watch a series and my series is watching um, house or whatever it is that my fun and recreation. Somebody else would be maybe an extreme sport or a mood maybe that they want to go when they're going on a, a hike or they um they I don't know what some ideas are of so I want to go climbing and that is their idea of the fun and recreation. So you might want to put that in there. They want to do more of that. Eating out at different restaurants. So that this program literally gets you gives you an opportunity for each one each um, segment to give an idea and break down what you want to reach in that area and what it does it means to you. Then it allows you to go in and then you put in your results and where you feel you are now and then you've got this um, the end result. And then you can also see very much easier compared to the other one how it would look if you were to put this wheel, see this kind of is a wheel on your bicycle, would it be a smooth ride or would it um, be rather bumpy? And I can't and this one here, the example one, is rather a bumpy ride. All right. So I just want to give some extra things that I found that help me apply. And apply is kind of like additives to this general, the balance wheel, what made things a lot easier for me. And especially with regards to understanding how um, things like nutrition and exercise can um, assist with it. And also understanding that all these are inter interrelational. There is a crossover a lot of, of a lot of these things. So yes, and health is important because it does uh, carry over into finance. It does cover carry over into work. It does carry over into family life. So I think these are things that we also realize that it's not just an in, uh, independent um, uh, segment by itself. It is there is a kind of a crossover. And when one area is lacking, it's most likely going to affect other areas. So something interesting that I learned when it came to the nutrition side was how important nutrition is, is actually in our functioning. And then, so let me explain this one. I went to, many years ago, my daughter, uh, she has some cognitive delays and she, uh, we were sent to this doctor that was doing wholeness and um, he looks at, so he looks at nutrition first, then he looks at the supplements, and the, only the last, um, as the last straw does he give you any type of medication, chemical medication. And he explained the nutrition starts with uh, making sure that you cut out things like dairy, took out sugar, and gluten, and then also processed food. And he, he was trying to explain that you will see a difference in her concentration and ability to, um, with her interactions and how alert she is by just changing that. So I was a little bit skeptical on it, but I was quite open. I was really at a place where I didn't know what to do. And within two weeks, so he had done blood tests and he said, in two weeks, come back, just change the diet, and then we'll I'll tell you which supplement she's going to take. My daughter was coloring in pictures that it was like out of line. So it was, you know, how a girl, uh, like a five-year-old colors everywhere. It was messy. There was, it was just literally picture with color all over it. And after the two weeks, she took a picture of a parrot and she literally colored in each feather with different color in between the lines. There was no scribbles. There was nothing. And I was just, I was absolutely amazed. Just by taking out the sugar, the dairy, the gluten, processed food, it made such an amazing difference on just basic attention with her. And then um, he started adding supplements. So one of the supplements that have kind of, we continued all these years later was the Amigas because that's got to do with the synapses and then also probiotics for good gut, and then just keen wine, which is the, all things that you can just purchase over the counter. But those are the ones that we continued. And I had those definitely things that make a huge, I believe, difference in your life. And of course, when you aren't think, uh, eating that way, it makes a big difference to your, um, your BMI and your fitness. And you just feel so much better about yourself. Yes, it takes time to adjust because you literally have to prepare. If you look at most things in the shop, 
most of it is processed food. And you got so you've got to readjust your thinking to the way you buy, where you spend a lot more time purchasing things. For the first time, I literally stood in the shop with my thumb over, and every product that I saw, I was like, does this contain gluten? Does this have sugar? And I was check checking, is this good sugar, bad sugar? And I went through this whole process. Um, but it was really, I think, worth uh, everything that I learned from it and how it actually see, you can see the difference um, in people's lives. Okay, next one is exercise. Now, I'm the worst one when it comes to exercise. I, it kind of has to just happen. Because if you said to me, we're going to the gym, I'm going, not a child. Uh, if you think getting a gym contract, it means I'm paying for a gym contract and there won't be any attending of the gym. And so I literally have to be doing something that I'm crazy about. I normally have to get a trainer. But it's about setting a realistic goal with that. And everybody's talking about 10,000 steps. You know, So I've got the watch. And I set it down to something that I knew that I could keep up with. So I'll put it down to 6,000. It means I still have to get up and I have to walk around, and but I can achieve it. And then I started getting into a habit. So it's, you're talking about keeping a routine, and then you just keep on doing it over and over. So my husband and I, um, sometimes we sit there and we're watching all these motivational someone on Facebook, you know, comes up on your feed there. And we came across a guy that's talking and he said, you know what, for the first few months, buy a gym membership. You don't have to go exercise, but pitch up to the gym. Just even if it's for three months, months every day, you pitch up the gym and you can go in. You can go in and you can have a look and then you can leave. This is what happens is after three months, you automatically get into this uh, feeling like that's one of my routine. And you actually feel sick if you don't do it. It's like you have to go. And as he talks about the routine of it. And also, of course, you're talking about brain plasticity there and how your brain just starts developing um, this idea that this is what I have to do. This is what makes me feel good. And then you start exercising, and it's a really part of your routine. That's um, what I do. <clears throat> so that's exercise. Just do something small. So I don't necessarily go to the gym, but we do uh, a lot of walking. And just making sure that I check my steps, I'm making my 6,000 steps, and I feel better. Um, self-care is important. I think sometimes we really lack the self-care, and we just carry on going through life, and then we wonder one day, when we sit down and we're sick and tired and we burn out, what, what happened? That's because we didn't take the self-care. And it, it doesn't have to be huge things that we do. It can literally be things like, you know, I need to have quality sleep. It can be, you know, tonight I'm going to really go to bed a bit earlier and get some uh, decent shut up. It can be time to just enjoy your favorite cup of coffee. So you might go and get, um, if you've got a machine with your favorite pot of coffee and you really sit back and you enjoy that cup of coffee, a nice hot bubble bath, um, it could be that you really spend a bit and get a nice towel, that when you get out the bath, you've got this fluffy towel, you can kind of just absorb that moment with that uh, as you get out the bath, you step onto a nice fluffy bath mat and it's just about, this feels good. It could be that you want to read a book and you get to escape and that is your, that is, um, your self-care thing. Or it could be that you paint your nails or you... Uh, you spend that, uh, you eat that chocolate or whatever it is, but it's about spending time doing something that is good for you, that it feels good. Um, it could be spending time that you actually spend time with a friend or uh, a loved one, but it's about also needing time for you to recharge. So think about it. What is it for you? It doesn't have to be big. It does not have to be extravagant. It does not need to take finance but it's about just taking that time that you can take time for you. Then I read up something about grounding. So the next slide talks about grounding. And, um, and actually the first time I saw it, it came up in Zac Efron. So yes, not going back to the Baywatch, but going back to Zac Efron when he was doing that reality show and they were traveling around. And the guy that he was traveling with, they got, they had, um, they both had jet lag. 
and they were exhausted. And the guy says, okay, stop the car, stop the car. And they jumped out the car and they were running around the field without the shoes on. And he says, get your toes into the ground. And then they were standing there, squishing their toes into the ground, into the grass. And he said, that's important. It's grounding. <coughs> and so I went and looked up a bit more about this grounding. And they talk about that it has this ability to, um, number one, your, uh, <coughs> your uh, what's the rhythm? Caucasian rhythm. So that's your rhythm with regards to when you sleep and your wake cycle. <coughs> Sorry, Bob. And then I did a bit more reading. It's got to do with the electrons, and they actually say it can help with inflammation. So, um, but the way I also see it is there's nothing better than if you've had a stressful day. In my case, I've had a stressful maybe client, it was a hectic session. I go outside and I just spend time, a bit of time in the garden. Take your shoes off, you sit, I sit there with my, my toes in the grass and I just enjoy the outside, the environment, the, the beautiful trees, I listen to the birds singing and I just enjoy that space. So yeah, they talk about a few ways of grounding. They say you can walk barefoot, you can run on the ground. So they even say it's something like if you're camping, you can uh, put a just a thin mat on the ground and lay there. And then the other way you can do it is submerging in water. Okay. The next one is called, uh, you know, dealing with stress. And I think a lot of us deal with stress and uh, it kind of builds up. And we don't, we're not discharging of it. And, and you know, it releases, so that they can do blood tests and they can check your levels of cortisol in your blood. And the, the more stressed you are, the higher the cortisol goes. And you know what happens when you, you're having those high levels of cortisol, it starts breaking, um, literally breaking down your body. So it's because you can't, you were not meant to be in that kind of state of reaction the whole time. So you, you got to bring it down. And what is the best ways of bringing that stress level down? Because I think society life just kind of pushes you, go, 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 go. So how do you stop it? How do you just um, go down one level? And so, one of my favorite ways, of course, laugh. So laughing, um, it, whether it's a good movie you can laugh with, sort of funny jokes, spend time with your kids, uh, they, they was good at making you laugh, connecting with people. So I really find that is a, a good space, spending time with my husband and my kids and laughing with them, having time to uh, sort of go down a level, deep breathing, uh, spending that time, just kind of taking as much oxygen in it that you can and then um, finding positive. So I realized that really makes a big uh, difference is speak positive. It's the word, what you think and what you say really does have an influence um, on your life. Uh, learn to set those boundaries. So if you get home and you say five o'clock is the end of the workday, five o'clock is the end of the workday, phone is off. Because as soon as you start allowing it to start seeping in to private time, into time that's with family, that also adds to the stress. You don't downtime. Uh, boundaries is very important and finding boundaries and sticking to boundaries. Finding things that you love to do, even if it's simple things. It could be building that puzzle. It could be reading that story. If it could be a, a binge, um, binge series watching. As long as you're doing something that you really enjoy. Then, of course, there's that mindfulness, which means being in the moment. Um, there's a lot that you can go read up about mindfulness. Meditation, it depends on how you interpret meditation. You can either relax, uh, focus on something, focus on an uh, image, or it can be that you can fill yourself up with, um, with whatever. So, like, for example, you can fill your, your mind with scripture. So whatever you feel um, the way you would do the meditation for you. All right. Uh, social connections. I think this is another part that helps us get through. Um, we are in our DNA, in the most inner part of who we are. We are built for connection. And if you are cut off connection, how are you supposed to survive? And it's about reaching out, making those connections with loved ones, with friends, having the support. So when you are down, you have somebody to help lift you up. 
when um how somebody to help you be uh, accountable to uh to stick to your boundaries to stick to your balance wheel you've got all these goals that you want to do and there's somebody that's going hey i see you you're kind of eating extra chocolates now or whatever it is but somebody that is just with you in it and when you're down they can feel either with you so social connection is a part of so important it's part of who we are and then which kind of leads on to the, the next one with of gratitude um you know it's been thankful for every, all the little things so sometimes it's like we kind of wait for the big stuff and it's sometimes just sitting and going i love that flower that flower is so beautiful i'm i'm so glad i get in this moment to see these flowers I'm so glad to have to be here on the sunny day. It's so beautiful. I'm so glad I have to you know it, oh, this chocolate is delicious today. Whatever, it's about being grateful for the little things. Oh, that felt good when that person smiled. So it's literally everything you have, everything. Uh, I'm so glad I could pour this coffee today. I'm so glad that, oh, I've got extra sprinkles. Sometimes it sounds silly, but, you know, if you're just having this attitude of gratefulness, it actually tends to boil over. It's like your cup just kind of overflows when you're being thankful for things. Um, which kind of then touches on a, another topic of internal self-compassion. And, you know, we're so easy to be able to <laughs> maybe forgive somebody else or give somebody else the attention or the time. But what about ourselves? And if we're not giving it to ourselves, then we start going backwards. We are, we are our worst crit, uh, critiques, and that also comes up in the, the course of self um, self esteem and motivation. And we, sometimes we have this internal critic, and it's, it's this very strong voice that says you can't. And then you have these external critics that you hear, and you like you're useless. And then these two combine, and they just feel even worse. Um, so it's about knowing that you make mistakes. I'm human. I didn't quite get it right this time. It's okay. Yeah, and you got this next time. And it's not everything is a, a huge failure. It's a mess. It's about I can slowly work towards this. I'm working towards something. That was just a growth. That was a growth moment. And it's about saying, you got this next time. It's going to go better. It's going to go better. And I guess... As we're starting to come to the end here, I just want to talk about with regards to if you do need help, I think there's such a stigma around asking a professional. Um, don't be scared of speaking to someone and saying, you know what, I need help. I, there's just too much on my plate. Help me sort through my stuff. It doesn't mean you're weak. It doesn't mean uh, there's this unfortunately horrible stigma sometimes around seeking help. But, um, mental health, but just understand it is not a, um, it's not showing that you're weak. It's actually, to me, it shows strength. And it shows that, you know what, I can take care of myself and I'm wanting to make the, the, the change. I'm wanting to do something that's good. So the idea is to kind of create this holistic kind of plan for yourself. <laughs> what do you need? What are your physical, your emotional, your mental, your spiritual needs? It's working on a plan that is in the increments going to work it to, to that point. Not some huge thing that you kind of pile on your plate at one time and think, okay, I'm going to get this done now. But And it, it's just too big. It's like trying to eat that elephant at one goal. you got to do it in small pieces. And each area, you're working on this little piece and working on that little piece. You know what? There might be times when you might have to concentrate on one area a little bit more. So maybe right now you're going through a, a hectic um illness and so your your concentration on health could be extremely high at this point and so your wheel might be a bit more um unbalanced because you don't have time for maybe career or studies but you can then always go back so it doesn't mean that it can be seasonal and so as you life changes so can your, your priorities and things can then reshift back into it don't forget that the wheel is now like it's not permanent it literally every now and again you can go back to the wheel and relook at it and say, "Wow, I've got this look up on there, and oh, you know what? I actually neglected this bit, but sure, look at how much smoother it's going." 
Okay, so the whole idea with the next slide is just saying you need, <laughs> you have to have an action plan and you you have to create a plan that can become a habit. It doesn't have how to have this big elaborate plan that can just never become. Keep it simple. Don't overdo it and make it something that's everyday doable. Um, thank you so much for sharing, Leanne. Um, I think this was really an insightful and useful information session. Um, okay, we've got a couple in the Q and A box. You can just maybe have a look. All right. Oh, uh, Dean, how could we go about creating the action plan? All right. So I would say number one, put your wheel, your balance wheel together. Then put your end goals where we want to go. And then you start developing the small kind of increments of how you're going to get there. So break it down into smaller, measurable things that you can do and then start implementing. So the biggest thing is the action. So, but make it small things for you to start doing. And maybe, you know, we're so busy that to try and create an action plan in each area at one time is too much. So choose the one where maybe you're the most lacking it. And then say, okay, this one, I'm going to start doing this. And for the next week or two, just concentrate on bringing that area in. Then maybe the week after that, you can say, you know what, now I want to start implementing something in this wheel. And then you can keep going back to that wheel and uh, looking at your action plan, your goals, and you can see where how if it aligns, is it working? If it doesn't work, try something else. Um, so the recommend framework would literally just be using that as a simple, it's the most simplistic type of framework that really uses that balance wheel. What's, um, what specific concrete recommendations do you have to destigmatize mental health problems? Oh, uh, sure. I think we're all trying to, everyone in the profession is definitely trying to work on how to destigmatize it. It's, I think. I do it by just talking out very briefly, like, oh, I, I'm, I see, a, I've gone to a psychiatrist or I go to a psychologist, um, and just be open and honest about it. Because I think as soon as somebody reacts and goes, oh, that, and then it becomes the, comes almost like that's when it gets stigmatized. I talk very openly with my kids about it. My daughter even goes to school and she says, my, my mommy is a, a head doctor. <laughs> That's the only way she kind of uh, remembers how to say she can't say she can't say the psychologist or psychotherapist, and she just goes, "My mommy is a doctor of the head." And so, uh, so understanding, I think, also maybe with our kids, like other things, if we start explaining to kids that it's okay to ask for help when things are tough, maybe it, we need to start training them. And there's a, a question here. How do I get uh, get into a relationship with a man after a childhood trauma? Well, the question around that would be, have you dealt with the childhood trauma? Um, there's a lot of things that people do look up. Um, if you go see a, a psychologist is looking at your attachment or how the trauma the trauma has affected your relation, uh, relationships and then working with that, and then once you can feel from that, then go into a relationship after that. So I would recommend if you haven't dealt with the traumas of the relationship, first um, go see somebody and then work with that. And then um, uh, get into, then you can talk about getting into a relationship. But I, with regards to setting a um, goals with them, um, I would spend a lot of time if it's a, like, um, self-care but i would really put it as a part of the the part of my healing for that one would literally be i think going to see somebody i if i put it in myself into the shoes i would literally say part of my goals to get to um being trauma free would be to um, say goals to be able to talk about it to be uh to come to a place of healing that I can then uh, be in a good space. <laughs> Type A personalities are not always content with the goals that they set for themselves and where they're going. They always want more and better. How do you manage that process without burning out? 
I get that because you're always striving. And then we were actually discussing in that in class. And what happens when you get to that point and you're like, yeah, next goal. You really see that next goal. But it's also about being that understanding what is balance. You've got to have balance in your balance wheel and know when to rest to. So you know what? There's nothing wrong with striving. I think striving and wanting more and developing yourself more, there's nothing wrong with that. But it's also understanding just as much as I want to strive for more, I have to have the opposite of I need just as much relaxation, just as much downtime for it. So, yeah, I also tend to do that. I must say I I tend to, like, a, I'm a study holic, and I just keep on adding courses and things to my name. But it's about when do I stop and when do I take a break and when do I say no? And I tend to say yes, 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 and any opportunity. And then I realize afterwards, I think I have too much on my plate. And then I need to say anything else, no. And about learning what is enough, how much can I handle, and when is the time to say no. And then I can take that up on a later, uh, later, ch uh, a later chance. So it's a learning yourself. It's about being honest with yourself. And then why stop? I don't think growing can ever end. What are practical steps to create a work-life balance, especially for someone who works across different time zones? That is difficult, especially if you're going across time zones. It's difficult because maybe you contact with families over a different time. There's a lot of time maybe spent traveling. It also means that if you are, uh, you might be working with people overseas and they're on a different um, so you might be working uh, when the, all the rest of your family is at home. But I think it's also about, so you, you might have to uh, kind of adjust things a little bit different, that you have work life, play life, you know, your family life, your spiritual life. You still need to bring all of those elements in because if you're not having the one, you know, the other one's just the one, you will get that burnout. Your health is going to go down. Um so maybe it's one of those things where you really need to sit and sometimes you need to make really big decisions on your life. To me, my opinion is that what, what is going to be more important for myself? You know, it doesn't help we lose our health and then we don't have the ability to do the rest. Do I work with a nutritionist or health coach? So I've worked with a, that health wellness doctor. So that... Um, that was uh, that was that was awesome, and um, physical fitness. So I don't often um, now and again if a, a client comes to me and we're working all these dimensions, then I normally say, okay, who is your gym instructor? Do you have somebody that you can work with? And then I I really kind of rope them into it. So, um, so then also I look at what that person has in the time. So I once had a client that the hours that they worked would not be your typical, she did shift work and she was the lady alone. And so it was not recommended that she, it's not like she could get home and then go for a run at 10 o'clock at night. So we had to work on an exercise program that was going to work for who she was with what she had. And so we kind of created, we found this online app for her. And then she was able to do gym in, the, in her house, in the lounge there, and she was able to work on the fitness thing. So I think it's literally every person is about what you have access to. It's about what can you afford? What is going to work with your schedule? So there's a lot of things that work that way. And then, of course, yes, um, it's always good to know, find a nutritionist, a dietitian that can work with the person. How can I set goals with such a busy schedule? Is there a roadmap in doing that that can help me achieve all the different goals I have? You know what, sometimes you've got all these goals on our plate and the, and the plate is just so full and you just want to do this and you have some fall off. And I think it's about go find small ones and sometimes we have the wrong things on our plate or we need to start saying I need to set this thing aside. So And maybe we need to put them into long-term medium term, short term goals, because it also kind of clears it up for us a bit. So I, you can put it down on a piece of paper. What is things that I actually want to achieve now? 
what is it that I can put later? What can I put much later than that? So I think if you've got a bit of a timeline, it also helps you do a little bit more of um, preparation, uh, planning with it. But the short-term goals, and you can say, okay, so which is the most immediate? Um, I think it's about, also, once again, two, so you've got this elephant. I kind of get the idea that this is a huge elephant. You've got all these goals. You It's like you've focused on going. But how are you going to get to that point if you don't start breaking it down into smaller ones? Don't forget as well, to me, I guess sometimes I, I do too. I get so focused on the end that I forget the journey. It's about stopping, enjoying the small things. <laughs> so today I, I got this right. I met this part of my goal. And I'm on the trip to getting to that point, but I got this far. And then giving, enjoying the gratitude, enjoying the moments of that I got this right so far and on the journey. So you can have it with a busy, busy schedule. I have extremely busy schedule and I still find places to pop it in. It's about if you want to do something, you find the time to do it. And it's about sometimes we need to take the things that the busy, the noise we have, we need to take those things off. Okay, so here we have another one. I'm curious about to know. Um, that has been active playing soccer, running, surfing, and hiking helps after a terrible experience. Was it just a pressing? <laughs> so, do you know what is good to have sport, and it's a very good way of um, dealing with with um, emotion. It's a good way of dealing with uh, trauma, with dealing with things as well. Um, it's also a good pro-social way. So Freud would love that one, right? It's a way of dealing with um, what you're going through. Instead of bringing it out in a bad way, you bring it out in a good way. So yes, it's good, but I think you still need to go back and go, I acknowledge that what I'm doing right now is only dealing with, or me dealing with what's happened, um, but maybe I need to go look for the roots. So yes, I'm doing dealing with it in a pro-social way, but maybe it's time I go backwards and let me deal with some of the root. Then I can just be doing this for the fun of it and not actually because of suppression of it. But keep 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 doing all those things. It's, it sounds like you are super fit. Um, what does a balance in the balance wheel mean? Isn't it maybe about knowing what areas we think of most important to our well-being and seeing that they are in check and when we want them to or where, where we want them to be. Spirituality, for example, might not feature a salient in someone's life to get there, feel purposeful and healthy and happy. There we go. So, and it's also one of those things with at least that wheel, that balance wheel that you can create. You can decide what is important as well. For, what would you like on your wheel? Um, some of the wheels take out spirituality and um, some we speak about not spirituality, but in religion. So I think it's about choosing what kind of... Uh, with, the pertinence or the main things that make your life focused and balanced. So, and what does it mean to be balanced? So the idea is, well, the imagery that they're trying to create is that that wheel is literally supposed to be like a round bicycle wheel with all the spokes, and you're supposed to have a smooth trip. But you know, in, in the idealistic world, it's not going to be like that. And we need to be able to then, uh, the, the ride's going to be a bit rough. We're human, and we're never going to have that absolute balance. As much as you want to strive for it, it's the kind of the idea of what you want to um, strive for, but it's the, the actuality of it is maybe not quite possible. So it's a, the idea that I want to, that we are striving to, and I'm working towards that point. So yes, it is something that you might um, do in uh, some areas that you, oh, some areas might just flow a lot easier for you. So you might feel like, family and that connection is just so important and it just happens it's 10 out of 10 where it doesn't matter when or where it, it just works and then other areas like for example in regards to exercise and that ah you know and i really battle with that so you know sometimes it goes between a one and a three you know it's more kind of there and i need to do a lot more to make it go 
um, to at least an eight. I have to really put a lot of effort into that. Um, just going back to that question earlier on uh, about the childhood trauma, do I would recommend yes, going to see a professional. Um, how does one find professional help without being mindful or being judged? You know what? The, you can go to many sites. You can search for, uh, I'm looking for a psychologist, therapist, counselor, and go read the people's profiles and have, find a personality match. So you, this is somebody that I can really speak to, and then go go that way. Your um, the psychologist and that that are professional, there's not going to be judgment there. So I think it's about finding the right person for you. But go read the, the profiles. It will give you a good idea of coming to the one that really speaks to you. With all the generations, mental health is a mess. How do I lessen the stigma involved? Uh, involve my elders in prioritizing mental health. So, I think it is harder with some of the older generations and I think different cultures. And I know from some people of my age as well, if they ever complain or something, the dad can say to you, What's your problem? Uh, are you having a pity party? Uh, go do some hard work and then put you out to do a, a job or you get a, they say, do you want me to, I'll give you a snack and you'll be fine after this. And that was kind of the way it was looked at um, mental health. It wasn't seen as something that you'd sit around and cry and talk about feelings. And I think it's really about spending, um, sure, working with the older people around it. Maybe it's about explaining where it is and what it what is the purpose of it. When somebody can maybe understand that just as your mental health, like your physical health, if you hurt your finger, you would go to the doctor and the doctor would help you mend your finger. So would maybe your brain or your thinking, your feelings are injured, and that too would need somebody to kind of look at it. And that, and don't like if you ignore the sore finger. It turns out it's broken, it's starting to get all swollen and it's getting inflamed and there's bigger issues generating there and it's eventually going to be wants to fall off. It's because you ignore the same thing of a physical world, putting into the, trying to understand the, the, the mental world in this kind of the same way. I hope that answers that. <laughs> Uh, there's somebody here that says, I'm struggling to keep in a routine. How can I do this successfully? I.e., I got to the gym, then all of a sudden, I stop it. Okay, so I hear that one. And maybe it's it's really a thing of maybe the gym wasn't the one for you. And sometimes you need to find something that is really works for you. So, example, now across the road is a Pilates instruction for me. It's so much better to do something like Pilates. So why not try something maybe that would be more interactive? So gym is kind of, you have to be your own motivator or you can, if you really want the gym, maybe get a personal trainer to help you out. And then they are going to make sure that you are there and you can have a bit of um, positive motivation from the outside until you get it as part of your routine. And I, I found that very helpful when I did try to do the gym thing, I had a, a trainer and then they, I, it was literally, if you did not get out, they would phone and they'd say, Leanne, where are you? And come, 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 I'm waiting. And they would wait until you pitched up and you would join a class and you would do your exercise. So it, it was good because then you, felt you were accountable to somebody. And I think sometimes uh, for something like with exercise, the gym, being accountable, it does help. So they often talk about rather join the support group Join a group of people doing something just so that you can, um, it makes it a bit easier. I always have trouble balancing work with home and studies. Work always takes first priority with some difficulty saying no. This year I started working from home full time and I've noticed that balance is now even more warped. Do you have any advice how to balance this apart from learning to say no? Well, that is the first thing because that's part of the building the boundaries. And 
you know, I had a couple that also had this problem with regards to now working at home. And it, it literally their whole life became enmeshed because everything was at home. But you literally still have to have those things of work time versus play time. Just because you're working at home doesn't mean that now home becomes or work time becomes or messes into your home time. And a lot of that happened actually during, you know, with COVID and a lot of people started working from home. It became a thing to sit at nine o'clock at night and still be working. You would just carry on working through lunch times. You would have six, seven o'clock at night, you're still going, which became a problem. You literally took your family life, your work life, and kind of tried to squish it all together. You were even doing gym while you were trying to work. So you, you, you're on a webinar, the camera and the, the sound off and there you are in the background running or uh, on the treadmill or you're going on the bicycle you try to combine it all it just it didn't work you kind of still need to have the, the, kind of the priorities of the different uh, divided up into sections and then and, you know sometimes we take our work into the bedroom and we're sitting there with our laptops and we just carry on going and then you're kind of ignoring your partner next to you so it's about Still then saying, okay, you know what, at 12 o'clock, that is it. It's now work hours are finished, closing the laptop and going into the house, you know, uh, the rest of the house where everybody else is. Um, setting up your times. What is my study time? What is my family time? So that you do know. So, but I, I must say the beginning was the hardest is learning to say no. But once you get used to being able to say no and then understand why you are saying no and it, it kind of feels good. The feeling of like, I was able to say no, and it gave me freedom. It gave me, it kind of gives you that uh, kind of like, I can do that, you know, and you feel better about yourself. It empowers you. We are kind of at the end now. We need to start wrapping up. We have two minutes left. And so um, I, just, I think, Danica? Um, so... We've now come to it close to the end of our live Q and A session. Um, so please do leave your email addresses in the chat box, and Leanne or the the rest of the team will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, thank you again, Leanne, so much for this wonderful webinar. Um, I think I can speak on behalf of everyone when we say that this was extremely helpful um, and very insightful. Um, please do follow us on our various social media channels to stay up to date on upcoming events, program launches, and updates to, and to see the recording to this webinar. Uh, once again, I'd like to say thank you to Leanne and to our attendees um, for joining us this morning or this afternoon, um, and we wish that everyone has a wonderful day further. Thank you.